my name is Lindsay Wyrick, the Frugal Crafter, and you're watching Home and Garden for Mere Mortals. Today I'm going to show you how to make this elegant bird feeder using a wine bottle, cork, drinking straw, some wire, and some leftover beads. This is a hummingbird feeder that really works, and it's a great way to recycle and even make as a gift for somebody. For this project, you're going to need a drinking straw, a wine bottle and a cork that fits the wine bottle and make sure you've washed the cork in the wine bottle well with hot soapy water and rinsed it out really good. Drill a hole in the cork and I'm using a bit that's like the exact same size as the straw. It's like I can't put that straw over it. Um, it's gonna, the uh, the rubber will kind of contract back in. This is a rubber cork not a um, cork cork and it will kind of contract back in so you want to make sure that it, the straw will be able to fit through and then just drill through with your drill. I've done a pilot hole already so it's going really easily for me. There we go. And then to make the straw fit, you want to cut kind of a long tapered, um, you want to cut it, cut the straw so you've got kind of a long tapered area so it'll be a lot easier to push through. And so I'm going to go in with my tapered end of my straw so you want to make sure you cut that taper long enough so it can poke out the end and then you're going to pull it through. Okay, and it's really tight in there. Okay, so I know it's not going to leak. So then I've got about a quarter of an inch above the bend in the straw right there showing through. To seal this up, I'm going to use hot glue. Alright, so I'm just going to do like a bead of hot glue. I'm kind of trying to put it on the rubber right next to the straw so it doesn't burn or melt my straw. I'm going to use this little finger cot. Actually, I could do it up here. I'm going to just press it in and smooth it down. And then I'm going to do the same thing here on the part that's going to be seen. So you want to be kind of careful to have it neat. And I'm just going to smooth my finger around there just to seal it in so there's no bubbles or gaps. Oh, we will trim this. Um, I'd go about a quarter of an inch there. To make the hanger, you're going to want some wire, and I'm using 16 gauge steel galvanized wire, so it won't rust. And I'm gonna pull off about four feet. I learned it's better to have a little extra than not enough. I can cut these with my just standard diagonal pliers here. It takes a little elbow grease, but I can do it. And some of these actually have little cutters on them. But that's kind of thick for those chintzy little cutters. Now what I'm going to do actually is find the midpoint of my wire, which is about four feet long, and I am just going to make my hanger here. So I've got the end and I'm just going to twist it. And actually I'm going to grab that with my pliers. Any pliers that you like to use are fine. I got my dinky little jewelry ones. You probably, your manly man um, pliers will be better for this, but this is going to be just fine for me. And I'm going to give it a couple twists. Okay, and that's what you'll hang that with. I'm gonna bend it so that's gonna be kind of right at the end, right in the middle. And then I'm just gonna start wrapping the wires around my bottle. Okay, I'm gonna leave that tail right there. Okay, so at the bottom where they meet, I'm gonna grab them together with pliers and twist. And this is incredibly awkward. So if it doesn't feel natural, then you're probably doing it right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is get some thinner wire that I can add some decorations with. And I'm gonna use 18 gauge aluminum wire and the higher the number, the skinnier the wire. So now I wanna use an assortment of lovely beads that are very sparkly. Okay, we have a strand of lovelies on there. So what I'm going to do now is kind of wrap it up here, wrap it over the center a few times. And I'm gonna wrap and just make sure that as I go, I am kind of distributing my charms, my beads. Oh, that's so pretty and sparkly! I love it! Oh, I've got some little butterflies I could put on there too. It's a light and it will attract the birds because I read actually that you shouldn't put the dye in the um in the feeder, that it's not good for the birds. Alright, so I'm just gonna go up and wrap right around this one. I should have left even a little bit more, or maybe not wrapped it around so much here on the bottom. 
I'm just going to wrap this little tail around a couple times here. I'm trying to get under both wires for a little extra stability. Here we go, and just smoosh it down. And there's our beautiful hummingbird feeder. Forgot, I want to add a little flower so my hummingbirds know what to shoot for when they're out there looking for food. So I'm going to take a couple of these silk flowers. I just, um, I save silk flowers if like we have like lays or something like that around or um, I'll buy them at the craft store or the dollar store. And I just cut them apart to use for craft projects. So I'm actually just going to glue on, I'll just glue on these two silk flowers there. And you could have probably also put like a little bit of red wax or something on the end. Okay, I wanted to share some science with you really quick. Now this is a bottle and it just has water in it. It's a plastic water bottle. Um, my first prototype, my cork was too big to fit my glass bottle. So I thought I would just try it with this plastic one to see. And yes, you can use a plastic bottle. So I filled this right to the top, just with plain water, just for the sake of this lesson. And I'm gonna put that in there and look, whew, it just kind of spurts out because I have a little too much in there. But I wanna talk about why this just doesn't leak all over the place. Um, a vacuum is formed when we do this. So if I have this like this all the way full, and if this is glass and you can't squeeze it, the hummingbird's not gonna be able to get anything out of this because it's going to be, there's too full. And I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but there's no water in that, in that spout in there. Um, now I could squeeze it obviously and displace the water that way. But even when I let go, you can see the bubbles up there. The water is actually, the vacuum is up there and there's no water coming through. So you don't wanna fill your hummingbird feeder too full. Now, if you fill it not quite full enough, then it's gonna leak and drip. So you kinda of have to get that happy medium. Now, I have my feeder here and I have kinda of pushed the wire holder in between a couple of slats on the picnic table, picnic table here. And I'm gonna to try to fill it here right from the pan. Now, again, this is one cup of sugar with four cups of water and you boil it and then you let it cool. And so I'm gonna try to fill this without spilling it everywhere because I want hummingbirds and not ants. Okay, so that's pretty full. So we'll see if that will um, displace or if I'll have to take it out and, um, and dump some out. Okay, so it's not leaking. Let's see if I can see the juice. I can't see the juice either. So I have a feeling that my hummingbirds are not gonna be able to get the juice out of there. So what I'm gonna have to do is pour a little out. Boy, that's pretty, isn't it? I think it's really pretty. I'm gonna pour a little bit off. Okay, so now I have it, um, I have a couple ounces empty in there, so it's about till there. That's where my fill line is. Push this back in as good as I can, because again, I don't want ants. Okay. So now, hopefully when I flip it, I'll get a couple drops to come out. Oh, there we go, yep, this is what we want. Okay, so a couple drops will come out immediately, but then the nectar is gonna be right there, and as soon as the hummingbird comes, they can touch it and get some of the, get some of the nectar out, and that's what we want. So I hope you found this useful. I'm gonna go hang this up over by my woodshed, I think. And um, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please visit my channel, The Frugal Crafter on YouTube and um, check out my other DIY crafting tutorials. If you want written step-by-step -step instructions on how to make this, make sure you visit the Homing Garden for Mere Mortals website. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.